Well, if you're a Kraken fan, I have some good news and some bad news coming out of this game. The good news is that the Kraken power play finally scored a goal, breaking their 0 for 21 streak. The bad news is just about everything else. What's cracking, everybody, and welcome back to Kraken r r where we try to come to terms with this disappointing start to the Seattle Kraken's first ever season, one game at a time. And for the Kraken tonight, it was their first second, in that it was the first time they were playing a team for the second time, and also the first time they were playing in an away arena for the second time. Now, I know we're stretching this whole Kraken first things quite a bit with this, but... Since the rest of the game really didn't turn out to be all that much fun, might as well have a little bit of fun here at the start. On the Vegas side of things, of course, the big news continues to be that trade that got them Jack Eichel, which was still relevant tonight as tonight's game served as their welcoming of Eichel to his new home arena. Of course, not as a player on the ice, this time just as a spectator as he won't actually be suiting up for them until, again, probably sometime in mid to late February but he was there in person for the first time and got things started with the whole siren revving thing that they do at the beginning of a game. Meanwhile, for the Kraken, who were looking to actually show up and play for the first time since beating Buffalo last Thursday, the big story here was the first start in net for Chris Drieger in a Seattle Kraken uniform. Now, he did have that half game after coming in for Grubauer, who got pulled halfway through the game against Philadelphia on that opening road trip, but there was that whole mysterious injury that he suffered at some point in that game, and this was going to be his first start and was his first start since coming back from whatever that injury was. And considering this team's slow start to the season, especially when it comes to preventing opposing teams from scoring on top of Grubauer's performance against Arizona, seeing Drieger in net for the first time was a welcome sight to most Kraken fans coming into this game. And as far as the lineup in front of Drieger, again, things continue to solidify as this looks pretty similar to the one that we've been seeing for the last couple of games, which I think is good news in the long run, but still has yet to pay off as far as the short term is concerned. There's still some mixing and matching on the defensive end. It's Flurry that ends up taking the seat tonight so that both Susie and Lauzon can play. And then on the forward end, Donato is out tonight, I think probably because of that big awkward hit that he took sliding into the boards in the Arizona game that really did not look very good, but fortunately he did bounce up from it, did have a little bit of neck issues and didn't return to that game after that. So we'll see if that maintains itself going forward with him having a little bit of a break with injury, but stepping in for him was the newly back Marcus Johansson. And as for the game, even with the high expectations that Vegas had coming into the season, on paper, this looks like a pretty even matchup records aside, as the two worst power plays in the league would be facing off against each other with Seattle coming in having a 7.9 power play percentage and Vegas not too far above them with an 8.3 percentage. And both teams have had troubles defensively and keeping pucks out of the net, as well as being relatively mediocre on the other end offensively. So with Vegas especially having the big injuries to their top players, having Carlson, Pacioretty, and Stone all still out with injury, and of course newly acquired Eichel not likely to play for a few more months, this definitely looked like a game that the Kraken could bounce back from that Arizona loss and come away with a win in. That all having been said though, as us Kraken fans in particular are learning over and over again during the early part of this season, especially those of us who thought defense and goaltending were going to be the strengths of this team, how things look on paper and how they turn out in real life can be two very different things. The game gets off to what I think you could consider a concerning start as it really doesn't take Vegas all that long to get set up in the offensive zone and start taking shots on net. Although I should be a little bit careful about saying on net as they miss with the vast majority of them, but the couple of them that do find their way on net, Drieger is able to save, which does help get him into the game a bit and is at least a notable improvement from letting the first shot in like we saw in Arizona. And as has been the custom with this team, really regardless of who they've been playing, it doesn't take too long for things to start getting chippy with some pushing and shoving in front of the net. And of course, if there's going to be chippiness and pushing and shoving, 
who else is going to be in the middle of all of it but Yanni Gord. And sure enough, there he is again, all five foot nine of him right in the middle of everything with that big Joker smile. Hey Stevenson, why so serious? That's it, come here you little... And just like that, Gord draws the penalty as Stephenson goes to the box for an unsportsmanlike conduct for grabbing Gord's visor and the cracking go-to there. At this point, oh for their last 21 power play. Which, in spite of how things have been going, no, they can't decline penalties, they do actually have to go to the power play. But this power play does look significantly different. Not necessarily in how they played for the first half of it, that was still largely an uncontrolled mess, but as far as the personnel on the ice, where... Geo is still quarterbacking it as the lone defenseman, but the forwards, they have Eberly, Schwartz, Wenberg, and then Marcus Johansson out there on the first unit. And again, it does not get off to a great start as it does take them a little while to even get into the offensive zone with any kind of control of the puck. But once they do, they're able to get set up and start getting some shots off on net. And eventually, it's Wemberg over to Johansson in front of the net, which in and of itself is a pleasant surprise just having somebody in front of the net during a power play. He gets a shot off, but it does go off of Leonard's pad as he's able to make the save. However, the rebound finds Eberle's backhand and he buries it just between Leonard and the post. And the Kraken finally get a power play goal. And for Eberle in particular, oh how the tables have turned since the beginning of the season when he couldn't get a puck to get across that red line to save his life. But now it's seven goals in the last seven games for number seven. So the Kraken are up one to nothing and then Gord wins the ensuing faceoff. But then a sloppy defensive play allows Vegas to get a shot off on goal nine seconds after the faceoff. <laughs> but fortunately Drieger is able to make the save and after a couple of minutes the Kraken are able to turn the momentum into their favor really for the first time in the game outside of that power play goal. They're getting shots off, have guys in front of the net to potentially pick up rebounds, and barely miss on a couple of really nice passes that had good chances to go in if they connected. So things are looking pretty good, up until a few minutes later when Vegas turns things right back around in the other direction and starts creating some of those opportunities themselves on the other end. But even as Vegas ramps up the pressure the closer we get to the end of the period, Seattle defensively is doing a pretty good job, at least at keeping any chances the Golden Knights have, mostly to the outside. But then with less than a minute to go, a nice pass finds Riley Smith in the face-off circle, who fires a bullet of a one-timer at the top corner of the net. But Drieger gets across and makes a spectacular club save, absolutely robbing Riley Smith of a game-tying goal and allowing the Kraken to escape the first period with a one-goal lead. <sighs> Just kidding. I mean, not about the Drieger save, that actually was a spectacular save to Rob Riley Smith, but on the ensuing faceoff, the puck quickly finds Alex Petrangelo standing on the middle of the blue line who slaps a puck at the net, and this one gets between Drieger's glove and his helmet, and into the back of the net just a few seconds later, and we do end up going to the first intermission with the game tied 1-1. Fortunately, the second period has been one that the Kraken, for the most part, have dominated all year long, and that was no exception in this one as they get off to a fast start creating offensive zone pressure right away and quickly end up on the power play just a couple of minutes in. Unfortunately, another power play with a sketchy start never really gets turned around this time and ends up creating as many chances for Vegas as it does for Seattle but it gets killed off with the game still knotted at one. The good news, however, is that even coming off of this, back to form, again, disappointing looking power play, the Kraken are able to recapture momentum right away and start laying on the pressure heavier than ever before and have a period of two minutes where they dominate play more so than either team does at any point in this game, either before or after. Unfortunately, even with this possession graph clearly looking like it should lead to at least one goal for the Kraken, nine shots in two minutes for them, see four saved by Leonard, another four blocked, and one shot by Tanev missing the net entirely. And I mean, stop me if you've heard something similar to this before, but once again an opposing team, this time Vegas, is able to escape a Kraken onslaught without a goal scored, and with the game in this case still tied at one. They do also survive another Kraken power play shortly after, and for really the remainder of the second period, it ends up being a pretty back and forth game right up until the very end. 
And as we get into the last minute of the second period, it really does look like we're headed to the third with the game still tied. Even with the amount of dominance that Seattle was able to have in the first half of the second, the second half of this period has been pretty much back and forth with neither team able to transition cleanly into the opposing offensive zone and get any kind of pressure on the opposing goal. But then with 30 seconds left, out of nowhere, it's Tanev on the forecheck who scoops a puck out of the corner in the offensive zone. Backhand pass finds Gord wide open. He one-times it past Leonard and buries it into the back of the net to make it 2-1 Kraken. And we are going to get to the second intermission with the Kraken having a 2-1 lead. Sure, they probably could have had more goals in this period, but at least they're going to come out of a period that they dominated with the lead. <sighs> Just kidding. Again, right off the face off the puck is into Seattle's defensive zone. A defensive breakdown within seconds allows Vegas to get a shot off on goal. Drieger is able to make the save, but the puck falls out of his pads, is batted around in front of the net a couple of times, eventually finding Dadanov's stick, and he's able to put it in to tie things up 2-2. Two 16 seconds after Yanni Gord's goal, Vegas answers right back. <laughs> oh, man. This team is absolutely incapable of closing a period out. I mean, again, for the second time in two periods, there were 30 seconds left for you to go into the break with a one-goal lead. But no had to give up that goal with less than 30 seconds left, didn't ya? And as we would be quickly reminded, not only are they completely incapable of closing a period out, they're also completely incapable of starting one off. At least when they're on the road anyway. Don't believe me? Well, going back to the Oilers game, this is how their last eight away periods have started coming into this third period. In Edmonton, first period, Leon Dreisaitl at 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Second period, Duncan Keith, 1 minute and 47 seconds in. Third period, Kyle Turris at 2 minutes and 57 seconds. So yes, that is a goal within the first three minutes of every single period. Then we skip ahead to the next away game, which is the one in Arizona, and we had plenty else to complain about with this game, so I don't think I mentioned it at the time, but here we are again. First period, sure, they already have a two-goal lead at this point, but at 1 minute and 33 seconds, it's Antoine Roussel. Then second period, it does take them a while this time, as for the first time in five away periods, they're able to keep the Coyotes or an opposing team off the board for the first three minutes. But 12 seconds later, at three minutes and 12 seconds, it's Travis Boyd. But they bounce back in the third period as just 46 seconds into that one, it's Lawson Krauss with the goal. And that brings us back to this one where the Kraken have triumphantly kept an opposing team off the board in an away game for the first 19 minutes and 30 seconds of each of the first two periods. Of course, Vegas scored in the last 30 seconds of each of those because NHL periods are 20 minutes long. But again, we're back to the start of the third period. And for the Kraken, that means back to old tricks as 30 seconds into the start of this period, it's Shea Theodore once again standing on the blue line, this time in the corner, about as far away as he can be from the goal while still in the offensive zone with a shot that goes right past Drieger's glove and into the net. Of course, after review, we can see that Riley Smith gets this one tipped before it gets to the net, which is why it ends up getting past Drieger. He would have made this save otherwise, so this one isn't on him by any means but it's still 30 seconds into a period and Vegas has already scored. Which is certainly frustrating considering how those last two away games went and the fact that this is now Vegas' second goal in 45 seconds of play. But at least they were able to keep Vegas from scoring early in the first two periods. Not to worry though, Vegas is going to make up for that real quick. As literally within seconds of the next faceoff, Tanev gets called for tripping and it's Seattle right to the penalty kill just after having given up a goal 30 seconds into the period. And now this might not seem like a big deal because after Seattle's power play goal, Vegas now has the worst power play in the NHL. And Seattle has had a pretty good penalty kill, rough night in Arizona against another terrible power play. But hey, they can probably kill this one off, right? Wrong! Does not take very long at all for Vegas to find the back of the net. Once again, it's Riley Smith who kind of just shovels one over Drieger's pad as he tries to make a nice save on another rebound. And with 1 minute and 16 seconds into the third period, Vegas is now up 4-2, having scored twice in the first minute and 16 seconds of the third period. 
I mean, if you just skip the first three minutes of every away period, this team's pretty good. Unfortunately, that's not really how it works. <sighs> and, uh, yeah. That would pretty much be game at that point. I mean, sure, there's still 18 plus minutes of game left at this point in the game, but it really felt like it was pretty much over when Vegas went up 4-2, to two, and based on how the Kraken played the rest of the third period, it seems like they also had a similar feeling as the effort just really wasn't there. Now, part of that could be the fact that and this could be one of the worst things to come out of this game, depending on what the next couple of days and what we hear. But Yanni Gord did not return to the bench for the third period. He did take a hard shot off the inside of the knee in the first period. Obviously, he came back. Actually, it might have been in the second. But either way, he came back and continued to play after taking that shot off the inside of his knee. But he doesn't come back to start off the third and we don't see him during the rest of the game. And the Kraken really have to hope that he's okay and not out for too long or really any time at all. Because even outside of being the most skilled player on the team, if Tanev is the heart and soul of the team, Gord is the energy of the team. And without him, it's a very obvious difference on the ice. So in the end, it's yet another game where the Kraken have more puck possession, more shots on goal, massively outhit their opponents, and this time, for the first time in a while, even actually end up winning in the faceoff circle. But where it matters on the scoreboard, of course, they come up empty and end up coming out of this game now with a 4-8-1 record. And yes, this is an expansion team, and with Vegas as the exception, it does mean they probably should be expected to at least get off to somewhat of a slow start. And yeah, there still are 69 games left in the season, which is a nice number, which gives them plenty of time to learn each other, learn the system, and start to kind of mesh better and maybe improve things as the season goes along. But for now, it's a really disappointing start to the season, and especially disappointing in the places that we thought they were going to be strong coming in, defensively and in net. As far as Drieger is concerned, especially with goaltending being in the spotlight for Seattle right now and not in a good way, he does only stop 19 of 23, which means that save percentage really does not look very good. But I have to say, I think only one of these goals is his fault, which would be the first one. The Petrangelo one is he had more than enough space to pick that one up and make the save. The other three, two of them, I think you can chalk up to bad net front presence from the Kraken and just letting Vegas pick up rebounds without much of a challenge. And then the other one is just a nice tip from Riley Smith that there's not much he can do about. Beyond that, again, I just, I don't, I don't know what else to say that I haven't said already. I mean, it's a yet another game that the Kraken could have, and in a lot of ways probably should have won, but they find a way to lose. The good news for them is that their next two games are at home Thursday against Anaheim, a very beatable Ducks team, even though they've gotten off to a surprisingly good start for them. It was the same thing for Buffalo, so hopefully they should be able to handle that game. And then they get a second chance at Minnesota at home after having beaten the first of those two matchups, that being on Saturday. So hopefully they can come out of that with a couple more wins as this team does look night and day better at home. I mean, a 1-6-1 road record pretty much says it all while they've been 3-2 and at home, with those two losses being probably their two best losses when it comes to how the team played throughout the course of the entire game, those being the Vancouver and New York Ranger games. So, yeah, hopefully being back at home gets things turned around for them again, and hopefully the next time we see a road game, it isn't more of the same of what we've seen. Otherwise, if you made it to this point, thank you very much for getting to this point. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section. Maybe a little bit of hype for the first power play goal in a while, but otherwise, maybe just well wishes that Yanni Gord can get back on the ice quickly and that he isn't terribly injured. Until next time, stay safe out there and be good to each other. And go Kraken.